to life in fiqh, right? Fiqh is how the text applies to life. They would do that and now the fuqaha, the, the role of the fuqaha has been diminished to almost nothing. So even if we have fuqaha in our midst, if they say something that doesn't click with my already angry predisposition, we'll just call the faqih a sellout. Or if the faqih says something that doesn't fit with my cowardly predisposition, I'll just call him extreme. In other words, we're very quick to write scholars off if they don't fit with our understanding, and we're not quick enough at all to acknowledge our own ignorance. We're not. We're very, very quick to pass judgment. It's like we've all got all of Islam figured out based on this, the khutbahs we've heard our entire life in which we were sleeping half of those 20 minutes anyway. We have enough of a qualified Islamic education to read some passage of the Qur'an, no knowledge of Arabic or of tafsir or of detailed analysis or of the usul that are you know, derived in fiqh. And if you've studied fiqh for four months and if you've studied usul for a year, then you are nowhere near someone who studied usul for 20 years and says, I still don't know usul. So know your place a little bit. We have to know, the, um, if the ummah doesn't know its place, it leads to chaos. This, this itself leads to chaos. And the reason I'm taking so much time before even entering Surah Muhammad, why am I taking so much time in doing this with you guys? Because I've noticed something. I have noticed something especially with our young people. The young of the ummah, whose blood is hot, whose blood boils when they see injustice. They are easily manipulated, very easily manipulated. Their emotions run wild. You know, a teenager, doesn't even matter if he's Muslim or not, thinks they've got the world figured out. I, I had the word fig figured out when I was 14. As stupid as it was, and I look back, I oh, seriously? That's what I thought? How dumb could I, could I have been? But you know, when you're young, things make you angry very easily. Things spike your ego very easily. And young people are the most volatile people in the society, at the same time the most important element of a society, right? They're the ones that everybody's trying to sell something to because they're the most gullible, right? Entire st strategies are made for how to sell them sneakers or which soda we, sh we should get them to drink or which clubs they should go to or how they should dress and what movies they should watch. Entire genres, right? Entire industries are made today just to target that audience and what direction we can give them, right? At the same time, what happens in the world, in, in our society in general, is you have young people who have this rage. They have rage issues. Non-Muslims even, right? They'll end up in a cult. They'll end up in some, like, you know, in a gang, right? They might get tattoos all over their body. There's some, they'll join something that makes them feel powerful over others. And they'll join something that justifies their hatred of others. And makes it feel like this is legitimate. They want to have, you know, a teenager generally wants to have a sense of superiority over someone else. So you'll find some of the really brainwashed teens, or you, it's not reduced to teens by the way, but young people in general, they'll be walking down the street, or even, let's not even talk about the street, the hallway in the masjid, and they're waiting for you to make eye contact. And when you make eye contact, they're like, what you looking at son? Like they got this hard look on their face like, yeah, you better look down. Yeah, you best look somewhere else. Like I'm, you know, they're so self-absorbed. Now what happens is, if an interpretation of Islam comes along that fits their rage issue perfectly, like a glove, that gives them a sense of empowerment over others, that lets them justify their intolerance of others and their hatred of others, and lets them, instead of using, you know, a teenager who's not religious uses filthy language, but a teenager who becomes religious and still has rage issues will say, Munafiq, Kafir, Muftada, he'll use all these words, right? So religious cuss words, basically, right? That, that's what ends up happening. So you have these predispositions, they, they, they gravitate towards certain understanding of Islam because it actually jives with their own personality disorder sometimes. It does. I've met teenagers, I've yet met young people myself who were, you know, all they were talking about is, I won't name names or name groups because that's immature and I, we should be above that. But I was in a, a city, I won't even name the city, right, because I know people in here that are from that city. So I, so I was... I was in a particular city, I gave a talk about the miracle of the Qur'an and a student comes up to me and he starts talking to me about some, you know, political aspect of Islam. And he's like, don't you think this, 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 and I'm trying to have dinner and this guy is not stopping, he's just going on and don't you think about, what, what about this ayah, what about that ayah, and he quoted like eight ayat from different surahs in an order. Now I knew where he got this stuff from. 
because I knew the people who are in this group that he was talking about, I had experienced some of them in New York. Their halaqat, they didn't even call them halaqat, they called them something else. I, I might give this away, but they called them discussions. So I, uh, after, after he was done, I said, so uh, how many discussions you been to? And he says, excuse me, what? I said, yeah, how many just, because you know, you, you spent 20 minutes explaining to me these three points and you quoted these ayat, but you didn't even get to the fourth point. They get to the fourth point in the fifth discussion. You didn't attend five discussions yet? He goes, uh, I may have attended some discussions. How did you know? I was like, I've been around the block, brother. <laughs> I know. And let me tell you something, and I, and I being obnoxious, I said something else to him. I said, let me now ask you some questions. You just answer me plainly. Do you, do you live by yourself or with roommates? He says, yes. Because he was dressed very trendy and you know, like nice car and stuff. I was like, do you, you don't call your parents much, do you? Nope. Stay up a lot late at night? Yep. A lot of hookah joints where you discuss Islamic issues? Yep. Usually, uh, you know, uh, not, not too often at the masjid? Nope, not too often. Uh, not really studying any Islamic studies other than attending some uh, some discussions with people that aren't really scholars, probably people your age are a little older than you. Yep. Okay. Any time spent in studying Arabic or Loom? Anything? Nope. Those ayat you just quoted, you know the ayah before it? In Surah Al-Ra'a, he quoted an ayah from Surah Al-Ra'a. You know the ayah before it? No. You know the ayah after it? No. Have you studied any tafsir of those ayah? Yeah, which one? Uh, no, I haven't studied tafsir. I haven't studied tafsir. I just, we discussed the ayah. You know what? The, and, and I told him at the end, listen bro. Just do two things. You want to you wanna serve Islam, do two, two things. Call your parents every day and be nice to them when you talk to them and try to make salat at the masjid. Fajr Isha. And then we'll have this conversation again in a year. Okay? A lot of kids, a lot of kids don't have their foundations down. They have family problems. They don't deal with their parents properly. They don't take care of their salat. They don't even take care of their tahara. But they're ready to Islam, establish Islam on the face of the earth. They're ready to eradicate the kuffar from the face of the earth. This is a very twisted look at the religion. And this is something I wish I could say this wasn't commonplace. I wish I could say this was, common, this was, this was not the norm. But it's becoming the norm. It's becoming the norm. Our Islamic studies are reduced to Google. Are reduced to YouTube videos. You know. They're reduced to us not putting our efforts in and learning. So th these are the reasons I want to...